In the comments, one of the students who was subscribed to my channel asked me, how's the married life? Let's talk about that. Las Vegas at this Candy Gate Country Club where I have a membership and today was a luau celebration. I thought it was kind of a cool idea for me to celebrate the fact that I got married while here at the Candy Gate Country Club. Because when I did my wedding, it was in Maui. And in Maui, we had an amazing wedding. It was like a video game themed wedding right on the beach at my friend Joe Sugarman's house. He has an awesome company called the Maui Times. And on that uh, beach, it was like in the best part of all Maui, right on the ocean was this house and this amount of land where we had video game screens and emulators. And I'm really into gaming. So I had video game gifts on every table. I had a uh, video game DJ music. I had a, uh, you know, video game trinkets as gifts to give to people. And it was so much fun. Um, one of the things about uh, the married life that I wanted to talk to you about is the difference between being married and not married and when to get married so that you could actually be ready for marriage. So before I got married, it was a few years that Amber and I were dating and we were kind of traveling on my tour because at the time I was doing the first ever RSD free tour. I went to 270 cities and 70 countries, and I did one to three, four hour events pretty much every single day I was on tour, bouncing from city to city to city. Back then, it was a combination of not just seminar, like if you go to the RSD free tour, you'll see a seminar, and you might see different instructors. This one was just me, but I was you know, having myself and other people with me, like volunteers that would help take my students into the bars and clubs or into the shopping malls more likely and then they'll practice their skills and come back we'd have some hidden camera video footage and break down what they were doing right and wrong it's kind of like a large scale boot camp where i can't monitor every single person like you can in the boot camp where the ratio is really low well let's talk about uh, the marriage life so when i was dating there's so many parallels because when i was dating we had dates multiple times a week. Now we always have dates like as a married person, at least once a week. And I think it's really kind of cool. Usually it's something that was just like either I plan it or she plans it. And we kind of surprise each other. Sometimes it'll be something that we kind of know what we're going to do, especially if we're traveling somewhere. We might be playing around at golf. I've been playing a lot of golf and that's why I'm a member of this country club. It might be something else that's like hanging out in the beach, watching a movie, chilling by their fireplace or something else that's kind of cool. And these are all the same kind of things that I did so that we just get to know each other and find out how you know, our goals have changed, we can stay in the same pace and, you know, just have that similar bond, similar vision, similar mission for what we want out of our relationship and what we want out of life in general. A lot of people that I know who are thinking about getting married may get married very, very young and may get divorced very, very young as well because they don't know exactly what they want. By having a very clear understanding of my passions, my goals, my, my journey of what I want in my life and my career, I'm able to have more of a congruent game plan. Now with my wife, She's really into video production, which is kind of cool for me dating her and also me marrying her. We, you know, kind of just didn't really end up that way. It was kind of like organic. It wasn't like a planned thing. You know, she was going to Harvard and Tyler was all the time asking, hey, how can we upgrade our video equipment? And she was studying digital media. And so we upgraded her video equipment. And I was thinking, you know what? This is really awesome stuff. Let's also do this for all real social dynamics. And that's kind of how we got to the situation. We started upgrading our camera gear. to something that was like little, you know, $500 cameras or less to cameras that are 10 times as much money or more. And we have all sorts of video camera crews as well. The other thing is that she's very entrepreneurial. We both have that in common. And the other thing about it is that we also have the same values. And I remember when I was a kid, I was told that having the same common values is probably the most important thing that you look for when you're in a relationship and for the common grounds for a marriage or anything else. Because I think that other people said, hey, yeah, you should just get along. But I don't think that's enough. I can get along with almost anybody. I'm pretty easy going most of the time. If it's like a hardcore business issue, I get excited, but it's not like that most of the time. And I think that for a marriage, it's more about mutual physical attraction, mutual interests, and also mutual activities that you want to participate in. You should not get married if you're somebody who is really just interested in a girl for sex or if you're interested in just locking down and having kids. 
Those are things that you could do with pretty much anyone. You also should not be doing that for any reason other than the fact that you really love this woman. You need to have that passion, shared passion, and really care about this person and have that care mutual interest. In terms of like finding that love and passion, that was like my New Year's resolution year after year after year, just kind of like try to find a woman I could really connect with. And I found that in my wife. I was able to find a woman that I could really connect with and have that shared journey together. I think a lot of people could have that connection, not just with one person. You know, it's not like there's only one person in the world and if you don't find that one person, you have that scarcity mentality, you don't have that. There's so many women out there that you could really connect with. But you gotta be committed to that woman in the long term if you wanna be in that relationship. So usually when I have friends that they'll meet a girl and they'll be interested in having a long relationship with her, they'll say things like, you know, this is like my future wife or what have you. And it actually sometimes ends up that way because they view that as like a thing. At the same time, I did that, you know, and I was me and my wife, from like our first date, I was like, you know, this is the beginning of an awesome and epic long relationship. And it actually ended up that way. We got married. On the other hand, I think a lot of people will end up not having the kind of relationship they want and they'll just rush into things. So maybe they'll just go too far into it and marry somebody that they met after just one or two months as opposed to like one or two years. You know, I don't think that you have to wait like 10 years or 20 years to really get to know someone to find out if you want to get married. But the other thing is, some people just should not be married. Some people just don't believe in the concept of marriage. You know, I came from a family background where my family was very happily married. My parents were very happily married and they've stayed that way their entire lives. And most of the people in my family have the same situation. So I come from that background. On the other hand, I have very close friends that have the exact opposite kind of family. And they don't really have the same kind of views on relationships. Other people, they don't want like the typical marriage. Maybe they want to date multiple people. They, maybe they want to have a relationship where it's kind of like more short term. But I think that what you gotta do is you gotta figure out if you wanna be with someone who you're gonna spend you know, the rest of your life with. That's a long commitment. It's kind of like uh, what Owen and I have as business partners, as the founders of Real Social Dynamics. And uh, I think that when you're looking for somebody that you could really spend you know, the rest of your life with, you have to know that you have each other's back. You have to know you have each other's interests all the time. Whether things go really, really tough, especially when things go really, really tough. Because there's times, especially in a marriage or business relationship, where things get so, so tough. It's really difficult to deal with all the things that are thrown in your face. It might be like uh, difficult issues in your family, like a death in the family, or whether you have difficult financial troubles in your personal life, or you have issues where your goals change, or someone has to relocate for work, or they have to... Um, you know, take certain amounts of time off to help the other person with their path due to having a lack of resources or a lack of time. So I think that what you got to do is you got to find out what it is that you really care about. And if you have that woman in your life as one of the things you care about more than anything else in the world, then that's definitely what you're looking for. Now, when you're involved in just a long-term relationship part, you're not interested in really the process of making that commitment right away. You're just really interested in getting to know each other. Not, it's not as serious, it's more casual. Having that really serious commitment for the long term or for the rest of your life, that's what the marriage is about. You could date somebody and have it, that love, that passion, that spark, but you still gotta have those common interests, goals, boundaries, and what have you. I mean, in, in the corporate culture of say, real social dynamics, it's the same as a marriage because we have a, a, a culture, a value of the kind of people we wanna have around us. And if you're with a partner that is continually surrounding you with the wrong kind of people, her life is gonna go in a very different path. I mean, it's not necessarily the wrong kind of people, it's the kind of people that are surrounding her, influencing her, and what have you. That might change who she is. I'm not saying that you still can't work things out because I know people whose parents are not getting along with their spouses or maybe their spouse's um, families. And as a result, you might have some issues. I fortunately don't have those issues, but uh, you know, that's a very lucky situation. Most marriages will have difficulties. Most marriages will have challenges. And if you have an issue where you are always fighting and arguing, and that's just not a healthy relationship. I know people who could get around that. They could have that. I personally don't like that conflict in my life. I'd rather just cut people out of my life if they're gonna have all the conflict and drama because in my life, I live a really intense life. And the business and the things I have to deal with in my life, I don't wanna have to take them to my home because I spend most of my time at home. You know, I sleep for eight hours a day at home, I work at home, and I have a lot of friends and my family over at my house. And so to have a partner, a life partner, especially like in a marriage, you wanna have somebody that you wanna be with and you can be with and be around that person all the time. You don't wanna have a situation where you're dreading coming home or you're dreading like having to go on vacations with someone or you don't have that trust and respect and honesty. 
where you can't really get along with that person. And it's really important that you have that common foundational grounds of that trust, respect, and honesty and have that positive outlook together that you guys will share. Because if you don't, it's gonna end up being too much drama. A lot of people will have relationships that are like an emotional roller coaster where it's continually ups and downs and swings. And usually it's because they have different expectations. Expectations in their life also may change. And as a result, maybe you shouldn't be in a marriage because your expectations, your expectations, what you want in life and when in your relationships change. Unfortunately, that could happen many years after a marriage. It also could happen in the very beginning of dating. There'll be like signs you'll see from even just dating in terms of long-term relationships and seeing those things. It's very different than going out there when you're just looking to have fun. Like having fun in a long-term relationship is cool, but a marriage is really more about just having fun. Are you going to establish a family together? Do you have the same views on family life? Are you going to be interested in living in the same place in the long term? Do you have the same goals and values and mission in life? And are they congruent if they're different? These are the things that I think are more important to look for than anything else. And I think they're also very important when you're interested in transitioning from like that more casual dating lifestyle to something that's more long term. Now, when we teach dating and real social dynamics, it's more about pickup bars. Pickup bars in terms of the hookup culture is pretty much the most popular aspects of real social dynamics. But at the same time, having the ability to have choice is something that allows you to get the woman that you care about and turn them into relationships. And I think that by having choice, having the ability to choose as opposed to getting into a long-term relationship or a marriage because you don't have choice, that is probably one of the most important parts of having a decision made about whether you're gonna have a relationship, a long-term relationship, or having a marriage. Because if you don't have choice, you're kind of limiting your options. In life, having abundance or having that abundance mentality is more about the ability of having options. It's kind of like a way of living. Because when you know that you have the ability to walk away from a situation if it gets unhealthy, you'll feel more confident in yourself, more empowered for life, and have more energy about the life passion. That passion will be brought into your relationship, we brought into your marriage, and all the things that affect a relationship, all the things that affect the marriage. You also should have a situation where your family knows what's going on if you have parents that are still around or you have other family members because that kind of builds a support network. From them understanding who you are and who your spouse is or your partner is, I think it's super duper important because they're gonna be contributing to helping you and also guiding you if they have had the experiences, life experiences that can help guide you along that path. You gotta be very, very open and honest and direct also in terms of your communication. Don't be afraid of opening up to your partner. If you have a situation where you feel like there's a lot of things that you have to hold back on, then those things are going to cause you a lot of difficulties in your marriage and your relationship and what have you. In terms of the dating life, a lot of people will view marriage as something that is something that you just kind of like could do if you're just with someone for a very long time and I think that's fine also because a lot of people don't like the formal aspects of marriage because a lot of people do it for religious reasons or the traditional family aspects of things. I thought it was kind of like a fun thing because I knew I wanted to spend my life with my wife. We got an awesome wedding as well and I loved throwing parties and we had an epic party. And it was kind of like a week long event where we rented a house that was like a vacation house of Lady Gaga. We had our friends there, my favorite barbecue there and we were catering with Spago and after all the night um, life that was uh, in Hawaii was closed down, we'd still have everyone over for beers and drinks and hang out. And it was just so much fun. It was probably the most fun week of my life. The, the symbolism also, making that commitment, having all your friends and family there, I think is kind of cool because it's a way where you can showcase you know, what you're doing and celebrate something together. And I love celebrations. I do them all the time for no reason. So definitely doing something for something like a commitment to your wife or your future wife is, is a really cool thing. You know, I, I love the, the symbolism also of you know, the, having a wedding ring and all these things, and I think it's super fun. And that's why there's entire industries built upon weddings because these are events that are super epic. At the same time, you expect that the rest of your life is gonna have just as many powerful moments. It's not like you have this wedding, it's the climax. It's the beginning of you taking your stuff to the next level and just building and building and building and keep going off that path. In the same way that I'm as somebody who's always been a big value, big proponent of education, especially formal education, I believe also in building experiences, reference experiences with the people that you care about the most and continuing to do that in the rest of your life and having the game plan. I will map it out consistently. You know, I'll put things like my relationship and date days and extra time when she needs it and supporting her needs, especially if she's sad or if there's like a issue, you know, sometimes my family. It'll be like health issues. 
you know, health issues with other family members or what have you. And I have to deal with that. And then you'll, they'll need your support. And I'll put business and everything else secondary to all these kind of issues. You know, there might be other personal issues that she has to deal with, or maybe she needs help with business ideas, and I'll help her with that and sharing her, which or sharing with her the knowledge I have from my own life. And I think that by teaching and sharing and helping and showing that you have all these interesting kind of skills also helps build, you know, the attraction, keep the spark interested and showing that you're interested in her so much that you're willing to help her on her path. I think that's kind of a cool thing that I've been able to do for my wife. At the same time, we also have a lot of common fun interests, you know, whether it's going to a comic con or going to a video game tournament or playing golf. And golf is actually an activity I picked up with my wife at the same time because it's one of the few sports that we could actually play together and do it in all sorts of beautiful cities and beautiful landscapes all over the world and also use it for networking as a tool. And that's one of the things I have a passion for. And there's certain things that she might not like because one of the things about being in a relationship is not just about being interested in your hobbies and having her getting a part of it, but being interested in her hobbies as well and finding the passions about why she's passionate about these hobbies. And that allows you to understand her better. You know, so when she got into say real estate video production, I got more interested in studying that in the market. I also always had a little bit of an interest, but it wasn't as much as her. And so I got more into that. Or when she got really into race car driving, I had a little bit of interest in that, but you know, even when she was at Harvard and she was building her video production business, she was really into race car driving and now she's most likely to become a race car instructor at the Spring Mountain Motor Resort where they have this country club and they do race car driving and it's a really cool thing. And I think that even though we have all these passions and goals and dreams, you know, always keeping it open about how your goals and dreams change and what's inspiring you allows you to understand each other because only by truly understanding each other's on a very profound level, very deeply each other's passions, incentives, goals, inspirations. Can you really truly understand why you want to be married? So when I, when I go out in my, in my daily life, I mean most of my life in terms of marriage life is I'll wake up, I'll have breakfast, I'll take some vitamin supplements, I'll start taking some business phone calls, I might type up a few uh, documents or work on Excel spreadsheets and do some financial models. I then will probably like hang out with my wife over lunch and if she just has a granola bar or what have you, I'll get on my treadmill desk and just start getting to work. Start making meetings and phone calls. I might go out and about make videos for my YouTube channel. And if I'm not doing that, I might be traveling. However, I try to spend as many dinners as I can with my wife and if not, I might be doing business. But I'll always, even if it's the most difficult time that I could possibly deal with, I'll always try to make time at least once a week, if not two or three times a week, to hang out with each other and build rapport and talk about what's going on because I'm doing all these things, you know, in terms of work. I have some friends to socialize with. I would do some athletic activity, like going to the golf course, going to the gym. But it's so important that I also understand what she's doing. If I don't know what she's doing, she must be going on her own path and she won't know if her needs are being supported or what have you. Maybe she doesn't have the resources she needs and she doesn't have like the friend circle that she needs. Maybe she doesn't know how the mentor she needs. And I need to understand what it is that she's doing. Not necessarily always just to help her because I know that my wife particularly likes to solve a lot of things on her own. But just to have someone to bounce ideas off and be somebody who is somebody's listening. You know, it's like, you know, you, you have to have a partner when you're playing tennis. You just can't hit the balls over the net and expect it's gonna win. You just go back and forth. And that's kind of like a, what has to happen in a relationship. You gotta go back and forth. You gotta keep talking, keep the open communication going, and it's super duper important. And these same skills are very useful in your friendships, especially those friendships that are most important to you. In today's day and age, you have social media that allows everyone to kind of keep in touch with everyone on a very superficial level. But maybe you have 10, 20,000 people that follow you, and out of those people, there might be five, 10, well, definitely less than 200 people that you pretty well know. People that you could call on and have each other's back. And if you're just in a small social circle, maybe you have like a few hundred people and maybe you know even less. I think that's what it is on average. You know, maybe you have more. I mean, I know that in my social network, if I wanted to reach out to somebody and have a party, I could reach out to a lot of people because I build relationships that stick. I build really important ways to offer value to so many different people that I probably have more people I could reach out to. But who deeply understand me and my life so well that they could write a biography about me, it's a small handful. And that's what's so important about having that long-term relationship or somebody that you really trust and that you want to spend the rest of your life with. You do not want to rush into things. You do not want to rush into even relationships because a lot of relationships will end up in marriage. But I mean, you do want to have that long-term relationship building. So I think it's very useful and powerful to date a lot, a lot of people. 
And I think it's so super important that you develop a relationship that is based on that strong foundation because all the little things that you do, that are kind of violations, like social violations. Like she expects you to act a certain way or talk to other girls a certain way. If you don't have that in place in the beginning or the expectations are not drawn out, you don't have the same, say like boundaries or what you will or not accept from other people, those things will be remembered and they'll probably haunt you for the rest of your relationship. I've had so many friends that had issues in the relationship blow up on a very big level because of that. You also want to make sure though that every other aspect of your life is handled. First and foremost, you got to make sure that your career path is handled, that you have the safety net in terms of like your finances and wealth. Not necessarily to be like super rich, but at least have the ability to support a family or yourself if you don't have a family or at least your goals, that you're taking yourself on the path that you want so that you can be the best version of yourself. Secondly, you want to make sure that you also have the intellectual drive. You need to have the knowledge that you need. You need to have the know-how to communicate with other people and maintain relationships and keep the spark going and also have the knowledge of who you are deep down inside by experiencing a lot of different things in life so that you can convey those passions. And it's super duper important because if you don't have that true understanding of your identity and that knowledge of who you are deep down inside, having that love and relationship is not going to happen. And the third element, of course, is all the things we've been talking about, the stuff that I've talked about in terms of married life, but the stuff that's super important in your friendships and also those long-term relationships. A lot of people should just realize that if you're in a situation where you're thinking about getting married or you're thinking about having a relationship with somebody, I think that's great. We recently created, not recently, but we created a relationships forum on RC Nation and the idea that a lot of people were interested in developing that. And I think that we're gonna go deeper into that, especially as our instructors are more, um, are developing a deeper curriculum around relationships as opposed to right now, it's mostly about dating and meeting girls and finding out how to get attraction. And I think the same principles though of attracting them initially will be very similar and utilized while you're in long-term relationships, just that the long-term relationships is really about a mindset. It's like if you have a deep desire to make something have accomplished, like having that relationship, you can make it accomplish, but you gotta hook her into your life and make her want to have that with you because unless you both have that switch on, where you both know that you want to have that relationship, you should definitely not get in that relationship. And you should definitely not be proposing or proposing to a woman unless you know you want to spend the rest of your life with her, even if she's putting pressure. And in fact, a woman really shouldn't be putting extreme amounts of pressure on a guy to get married or to have kids if the other person isn't showing the signs. Like if the other person's showing signs like they really care about the girl or what have you, and they have that long-term commitment, that's one thing. But a lot of people will do it because their parents are too old and they want to have children and they want to like get into a marriage because they're afraid that their parents won't see their wedding. And I have a lot of friends who have those problems. But you should really have a situation where your desire to get married is based on that long-term commitment more than whether your parents are involved in seeing your, kid, your future kids, whether you want to have a kids. And I think it should be a choice that is made mutually. It shouldn't be one that's done with just pressure one way or the other. You know, I think that before I got married, I was looking at rings and I was talking about rings with my wife and I was, you know, talking about, you know, future plans and all, all sorts of things like that and how, you know, I was interested in the concept of marriage and we were talking about these things. At the same time, when I did get married, I did a proposal on the beach and it was in the Maldives. It was so awesome. And when I proposed, she was really surprised. It was really awesome and she was so happy and it was really great and beautiful. At the same time, I think that a lot of people, you know, if they want to like propose and have marriage and what have you, you got to make sure that you're with a woman that also wants that. You should be discussing your expectations about whether you are going down that path where you should have marriage or whether you should not, whether you want to be in that long-term relationship or not. And also how your interactions are going to be with other people, whether it's with other women, whether it's going to be with other friends, how you're going to be your, how your family life will be congruent in terms of your family and her family and have all those game plans kind of known so you know complete picture of what you're getting yourself into. You know the complete picture of what your life's gonna look like in the married life because my married life is gonna be very, very different than other people. I know people that are pilots and their life will be them traveling around for like a week or so and then they'll have you know, some very intense time downtime with their wife or people in the military will have very intense relationships and they'll be out for like a few months in sabbatical or out on active duty and they'll basically be leaving their wives at home or their girlfriends at home. So you should definitely not get married unless you know 
what it is that you're getting yourself into completely, the complete picture. You need to have a very good idea of how you guys want to spend your downtime and make time for the downtime because if you don't and it's just say dinner and it's really just not like a fun thing, it doesn't show that you care as much. Like if you're just going home and then having like a drink with her and that's it, it can be nice. But if you, if you show that you put some thought, time or creativity into you know, your holidays, your celebrations, your relationships, your day-to-day -day life and show that you really care, I think it's going to show things in a much more different way. And on a specific sense, you know, if I am going to give my wife a present, the thing that she always brings up the most was the fact that I put so much thought into like the verbiage of the message of the cards for like our anniversaries or our holidays, and I'll talk about them. And I think that so much in my life, I try to go all out on pretty much everything I do. You know, so I'll do that in my marriage life. I'll do that in my business life. Because when I put my mind to something, I'll go all out. I'll go all the way. I'll do whatever it takes to make it the best I could possibly make it. And there's only so much time that we have. So it's a challenge. You gotta budget your time and make sure that you have the time to put into this. If you're such a hustler and your time is all being sucked away into your business life, you don't have time to put in a relationship, fortunately, maybe you're not gonna have some time for a relationship or a marriage. You gotta develop a lifestyle that's going to allow you to have a healthy relationship or marriage. And that's a challenge for a lot of people. It's a luxury. It's not something that's just a privilege for everybody in the world just to have. You have to craft the lifestyle that you want. You have to craft a lifestyle that you want to be done in a way that is gonna be congruent to your partner and you if you wanna be in a marriage, which makes it even more challenging. So in order to do that, you gotta have a solid game plan of how you're gonna spend your life, how you're gonna spend your time. So I track not just my business life, but my personal life. I combine them together. I have on my Google Calendar where I have it on my Android, and I'm also head watching it on like, um, I have it like important things my concierge, my personal assistant, and executive assistant deal with. They will track just not just my business stuff, but also the personal stuff that's going in my life. And if there's certain things that I need to be aware of, I'll know about them. In the same way that if something is going on in my business life, I'm gonna know about it. I'm gonna know about my personal life because I'm gonna be keeping my eye on the ball continually. I'll be continually asking questions, trying to listen. And if I notice small signs or hints that something's a little bit off, a little bit unusual in a negative way, I'll ask about it, try to find deeper. And if I don't get like a deep answer, I'll bring it out so that it actually happens. I won't let these little things linger. It's when a lot of girls will say, oh, I'm giving the guy a hint. What she really is trying to convey to you is that there's something that's going on in her life and she wants to talk about it, but she's just kind of concerned about how to convey it so it doesn't portray the wrong image. And a lot of times you'll have that as well. There'll be things that you're thinking about in your life and you don't have that radical honesty. There's a book that was written that was called Radical Honesty. It's about how you just say what's on your mind. And most of the time that's the right way to do things. However, on the other hand, there's another book that's called Crucial Conversations, where you're in difficult conversations where there's high risks, high potential losses. That's when things are an issue. Now, most of the time, I think that speaking exactly what's on your mind is going to be the right move. Just saying it in the right way. If you, get, if you have that level of trust, you should, of course, you should you know, be able to get away with that. Now, if there's like a touchy issue, you should be considerate and be careful, or else you have to apologize for conveying the wrong message. But at the same time, I think that when you're saying exactly what's on your mind, on your heart, you're more likely to connect to other people all the time. More than often than not, regret stems from the time where you don't say what you really want. When it comes from the times where you don't really say it's on your mind, you usually kind of hide those ideas that you think that might be controversial or something might be, something might be offensive or something might be a little bit of a different belief than what other people have when they're around you. So you gotta get over that. You gotta be somebody that is able to convey who they are without that fear, that fear of offending people, that fear of uh, not connecting on the way that you want. And also I think that when you do that, you're more likely to be true to yourself. A lot of the reasons why I think people are not ready to be in a relationship is because they are not having that deep level of congruence more than anything else. Maybe they're portraying to other people that they're a certain kind of person but they're not that kind of person. Maybe they're trying to portray they're more successful than they really are. Maybe they're trying to portray that they're like uh, really good with uh, women, but uh, they're overly portraying it and they're trying to, they're coming across in like that awkward kind of comic kind of way where it's kind of um, like a tool. But basically, uh, you know, I think a lot of people, they just have to develop that sense of identity so they can know who they are. And if they're not where they want to be in life, they should be able to convey that. They should not try to like, over-exaggerate. 
you know, at the same time, a lot of people will say, you know, what you should do is try to act as if you're going to have that level of success in terms of like being a successful person. You want to act as how you would portray yourself if you were that kind of person. But you should not be acting like you're somebody else, something that you're not, and, and portraying that to other people so they misinterpret who your identity is. That is most important because having that congruent identity is more important than anything else. Well, that's it. That's what I think about the married life. That's what I think what you need to have to know if you should get married or not. I hope you enjoyed the video and thanks for listening. Guys, subscribe to my channel, comment below, give me your feedback. And if you have videos that are interesting ideas or potential topics you wanna to share with me, post them below. I'd love to check them out. I get so many ideas for my future videos from them. Cheers.